All right, guys, Good Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here at the Mifflin County Sportsman Association near Lewistown, Pennsylvania. Now, guys, I don't shoot in North Carolina. If I do, you're usually with an X-Ring or a couple other folks. But in any case, we're out here. It's really windy today, which makes it a perfect day to tune rifles for functionality, not necessarily for accuracy. So what I've got here is uh, the rifle I shot yesterday. This is equipped with the uh, Ballistic Advantage barrel. This is our fluted premium, which once we went ahead and trued up the face of that uh, upper receiver, which means, and I might do a video on that one. A lot of people have their pluses and minus on how they want to do it. I will tell you this, it worked here. But what I'm trying to do now is I want to uh, tune the adjustable gas block. Now we're running the superlative adjustable gas block, and these things are pretty cool. I'm not going to get into the differences because we're not talking about a review of this guy. We're talking about how to tune it. Now, why would I want to have an adjustable gas block? One is if you're running a suppressor, uh, which I don't run, uh, but I run them on my competition rifles, and simply because what I'm trying to do is mitigate recoil the best that I possibly can. And one of the ways we do that is you actually do start off with a gas block that's adjustable, a low weight bolt carry group like this Brown L's. Hold on, I'll show you. This guy right here, all right? And then possibly working with a low mass uh, or a low recoil buffer spring. And what that does is it keeps all this from moving back and forth. Now, how do we adjust it? Well, what the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take this guy right here, hold on. This uh, and most of your gas blocks will come with a uh, Allen wrench, just like this one. Now the uh, superlative, it adjusts off of the front. Now I do run a couple different variations. Uh, we've got velocity precision, adjustable gas blocks. We've got Odin works. I love the Odin works. And as well as we've got the Geisley and a couple of other ones. But in any case, uh, some of these guys you're going to adjust off the side, which means that the handguard has got to work wherever the hole is for that. Uh, also, but this one, let's just say, but this one right here, it adjusts off of the front right here with this long Allen wrench key. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close up the gas block all the way. And watch what happens when I do this. So. We're going to do that, and what the ultimate goal here is, is to open it up to where my bolt carrier locks to the rear. And what I also want to do is I want to achieve a ejection. Well, I really don't care where it ejects to. As long as it functions properly, it feeds the next round. So the ultimate goal right now is we want to run it to where it locks back. Then we're going to run it to where it will function and cycle and feed that next round and so forth and so on and then what we'll do is we can tune it to where everything functions but what has to happen is just like anything your direct impingement gas comes up here through the round as the round is coming out the dwell time it comes back through the gas tube it drives that bolt carrier back in conjunction with the buffer and the spring and it comes back another thing that we want to consider with an adjustable gas block is the bolt bounce when this thing jumps if it can come back solid enough and that has a lot to do with your buffer tube and spring uh or in the buffer uh what happens is this thing gets a nice solid push but it's not going so fast to the front that it goes bam 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 in slow motion you can see this happening just look up uh bolt bounce all right so what are we going to do i'm going to go ahead i got one round loaded in here we're just going to use 55 grain and also Guys, a lot of times you're going to use specialty ammo, so a lot of guys will tune it to that specific ammo. I do that in a lot of the case. All right, so first thing we're going to do, I'm going to bring this back, bring it forward. Now watch how far back this guy jumps. Here we go. And those brakes loud. Okay, so what happened? You probably didn't see any movement in that BCG, all right? So now what I want to do is I'm going to open this thing up a full turn. And what I'm going to do is I want you to watch that bolt carrier right there. So we'll go ahead, turn to the left, one full complete rotation of the adjustment. 
And what it'll do is you will see some movement in that bolt carrier. Let's go ahead and lock, lock it to the rear. Also, <laughs> no ejection. This is the fun stuff, guys. This is what I enjoy. Ready? So watch that BCG. Ah. I don't know if we got any movement off it or not, but what I know is I'm going to have to continue to loosen it up. All right, that's one complete rotation. There we go. Okay, so now, let's see. Because sometimes you get a false opening and a uh, hold open because it's caught inside of the mag. But right now, that thing is held fully open. Now what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and verify that one more time. Because that was two rotations. Here we go, one more time. Ah, See, that time we didn't get it. Problem with using this kind of ammo is that your standard deviation is so far apart, you may get one round that's more aggressive than the other. One more time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna give it a half turn, all right? Go ahead and make sure we're clear. We're getting an ejection, but we're not getting that hold back. So one half turn. Y'all can hear that wind. There we go. Okay, so let me just tell you something. The ejection pattern, it is going exactly to the four o'clock, 4.30 position, which is ideal, that's that uh, proper functioning. Let's go ahead and test it one more time. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close it back up one quarter. Here we go. Okay, so now, We'll go ahead and close it up a quarter turn. Here we go. Perfect. Now, to me, that's ideal. Uh, you can do a comparison before, before the first shot and then the third shot. So now I want to check to make sure that the rifle properly cycles. Here we go. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Adjustable gas blocks are very simple. Does every rifle need one? Absolutely not. Uh, is it a nicety? A nicety? Is that what I want to say? Yeah, it's kind of a thing that's a little bit, it's like having cool mags on your car. Is it something that you need? No. Is it something that's really good to have that, it, that will benefit your rifle in the competition world when using a uh, low weight BCG and a buffer and a spring, absolutely. So anyway, I just wanted to do this video. Some people have asked this question and I thought today, since it's so windy, let's go ahead and adjust these rifles and uh, get them functioning properly. So if you like this video and you wanna see some more like it, let me know, give it a thumbs up. And we always end it like this. God bless America, God bless us men, women in uniform, 24 seven for our freedom, because freedom's not free. And I'm talking about those individuals who protect our constitution as it was written by the founding fathers. I hope this thing is focusing in. Let's go to 132. I'm out.
God be good.